Curves in Corel Draw can be as simple as a single straight line, or complex open or closed shapes comprised of curved or straight segments. In this video, we'll look at what defines a curve, the various curve drawing tools, and working with the nodes that comprise curves. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial to try out the steps yourself. A curve is an object that follows a specific path which gives it its defining shape. A curve can be a straight line, an open curved line, or a closed multi-segment path like the curves inside this planet. Every curve has nodes, which can be displayed and manipulated with the Shape tool. In this mode, I can move nodes, adjust control handles, and more. Aside from spirals, freehand lines, and Bezier curves, most Corel Draw objects are not created as curves. Here's a rectangle which is listed as such in the Objects Docker. This rectangle has nodes, which I can see when I activate the Shape tool and click the rectangle. But I can't do much with these nodes except for changing the shape of the corners. I can also see nodes when I select the rectangle with the Pick tool. They are the tiny white squares. But again, I can't use them to change the shape. If I want to work with these nodes to change the rectangle shape, I first need to convert the rectangle to a curve, either by clicking this icon, or right-clicking and choosing Convert to Curves, or pressing Ctrl Q. Now I have a curve in the Objects Docker. When I use the Shape tool now, I can access each node individually. Three nodes are white squares, and the arrowhead node at the start or end of the curve is a line node. A node I select turns blue, and I can drag nodes to change the shape. I can marquee select multiple nodes. If I double click a node, it will be deleted, and if I double click along a line or curve, I add a new node. I can change the look of nodes by going to Tools, Options, Corel Draw. On the Nodes and Handles tab, I'll increase my node display size. Here is where I can set node colors, and these three shapes represent the three types of nodes cusp, smooth, and symmetrical. The square nodes of this rectangle shaped curve are cusp nodes. This means nodes that hold a sharp corner. If I want to change these to smooth nodes, I first need to convert the straight segments to curves. I'll select all nodes and click Convert to Curve. Now I'll click Smooth Node, and now all segment transitions are smooth. Now, in addition to moving nodes themselves, I can also use a node's control handles to control curvature. I'll right-click on this node and change it back to Cusp. Now this corner can be sharp again. The last node type is Symmetrical, which has a diamond shape. Symmetrical nodes have the same tangency and curvature on both sides of the node. Now that we have an understanding of how nodes can be adjusted, let's look at some of the curved drawing tools, which can be found in this flyout toolbar. The easiest is the two-point line tool. I can drag out individual segments, and if I keep the shift key pressed, I'll snap to angles at 15 degree increments. I can also start a segment at the end node of an existing segment. Once a curve is closed, I can give it a fill. This object is created as a curve, so I can go straight to the Shape tool to start node editing. For any curve tool, look in the property bar to see additional options. In this case, I have options to make perpendicular lines or lines tangent to a curve. With the Freehand tool, I can drag to create a curve. If I keep Shift pressed, I'll drag out a straight segment. Nodes are placed where curves change direction or angle. Polyline is similar to freehand, except that I can continue drawing multiple connected segments. If I move my mouse instead of drag, I'll create a straight segment. I'll double click to finish. With the Bezier tool, I can click repeatedly to create continuous straight line segments. To create curves, I'll start by dragging to define the starting direction, then click the next point and drag, and so on. I can click without dragging to add straight segments. I'll press the spacebar to finish. While dragging to adjust curvature, if I press Shift, I can snap to angles. When pressing Alt, I can move the node itself. By default, these nodes are smooth nodes, but if I want a sharp corner, I can press the C key while dragging to change the node to a cusp. If I double-click the Bezier icon, I'll open the options for this tool, 
which also apply to freehand. Here I can adjust corners and straight lines and control auto join. The pen tool is similar to Bezier, but has the preview mode option. With preview, I can see how the segment will look before I draw it. The B-Spline tool enables me to draw smooth curves by setting control points that shape the curve without breaking it into segments. By default, the nodes aren't on the curve itself, but if I press the V key while clicking points, I can create straight segments. Double-clicking ends the curve. The three-point curve tool is great for drawing arcs, without worrying about nodes or control handles. I'll click and drag between the start and end points, then move the mouse and click the third point. In the next flyout toolbar, Live Sketch is great for working with pen tablets, mimicking how I would hand sketch lines and curves. Here I can set the timer after which my strokes will be converted into curves, and the distance from the curve within which new strokes will be added to existing curves. Finally, the Smart Drawing tool tries to guess what I'm drawing and converts my freehand curves into vector lines or curves. I can adjust the levels of shape recognition and smoothing. Once you have a grasp of how curves and nodes work, it's easy to create or trace the exact shape you want. As an example, I have this space theme document and I want to trace around the cat's mask. I'll use the Bezier tool and click and drag all the way around to make a smooth closed curve. I don't have to worry about being overly exact because I can use the shape tool to adjust nodes or add nodes where needed. For another example, here's an asteroid I've imported, which I also want to trace. This time I'll use freehand to trace with line segments, double-clicking after each segment to continue the next segment, and clicking once to close the curve. Then with the shape tool, I'll select all nodes and convert to curves, then make the nodes smooth. This removes the sharp corners, and I can adjust the nodes. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on curves in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial to try out the steps yourself.